السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وَإِنَّمَا تُوَعَدُونَ لَآتٍ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send our peace and blessings upon our noble and beloved Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. And I remind myself and yourselves on this blessed day of Yawm al-Jumu'ah to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Qur'an 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this verse to fear Allah, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to look at what we have prepared for tomorrow, what we have left for tomorrow, and to fear Allah because indeed Allah knows what we are doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of every single action, thought, feeling that goes through us, that we do in this life. And everything will be in the hereafter waiting for us to be judged. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in this short khutbah today, I just want to simply ask a question. One question. After a week of the death of people that were very close to us, beginning with our dear and beloved brother Bilal Muhammad, who is a neighbor of the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immerse him in his mercy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him in ranks. And may Allah forgive him for his sins. One of our own youth, 19 years old, an active volunteer, somebody who did a lot of great things for the masjid, and would often be seen sometimes in this khutbah, sitting on that side, listening, and would come give me salams after the khutbah. He didn't know that last khutbah was his last khutbah. And after the death of a true scholar, visionary, and teacher who left a great legacy, Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif, who was the founder and starter of Al-Maghrib Institute, an institute that we all heard of and perhaps benefited from insha'Allah ta'ala. And if you didn't, then we should because there's so much benefit in it. Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif just passed away in his 40s or early 50s, late 40s, early 50s, with no prior condition. Left his house not knowing or thinking anything is wrong with him. He just collapsed and he passed away when he was with his family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on him and to immerse him in his mercy, to forgive his sins and make his actions those who leave a legacy behind for others to tread after him in the same path. The question that I have for you today is what legacy did you leave behind? And what legacy are you planning to leave behind? Will you be a person that is simply an addition to this world? Or someone who will add something to this world? Will you be someone who the world's burden or the world is less burdened with the death of? Or would you be a person that the heavens and the earth cry upon. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Ali Fir'aun, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ That the heavens and the earth did not cry upon the death of Fir'aun. Meaning what? That upon the death of a true believer, the heavens and the earth see the difference. Somebody that was populating this world with actions and righteous deeds, calling to that which is good, forbidding that which is evil, spreading knowledge amongst the creation, giving back to the community, being a beaker of light the way they should be as a Muslim, in whatever context you put them. These people, the heavens and the earth cry upon them. The, the, the poet in Arabi, he mentioned, I'll try my best to translate it. He said, مَاتَ قَوْمٌ وَمَا مَاتَتْ مَكَارِمُهُمْ وَعَاشَ قَوْمٌ وَهُمْ فِي النَّاسِ أَمْوَاتُ There are people that live, there are people that die, but their legacy never dies. And there are people that live, and as they live amongst the people, they're continuing to be as if they're dead. There are people that when they die, they leave a legacy, it's as if they, what? 
their legacy is never dead. And there are people that they live and it's as if they are dead because they are not giving back or adding on to anything in this world. What did you leave behind, brothers and sisters? What are you planning to leave behind? What is the world? What are the angels in the heavens going to say upon you leaving this world? Wallahi, this is a question we should go to sleep thinking about every single night. If there's no value that you added to this world, to this country, to this city, to this community, to this masjid, to your family, something that you added, something that you did, then that is indeed a lost day. Any day that you are not carving your legacy, whether it be spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, with your successes in every regard, you can leave a legacy with everything. And wallahi, this is something that we need to think of. And one of the best legacies to leave behind is the legacy of ilm, the legacy of knowledge, and passing on something that will continue to give back and produce fruits until the day of judgment. As one of the scholars, he wrote a poem about his son who refused to seek the path of knowledge. And he was talking to his son, his name is Al-Alim Al-Albiri, rahimahullah. He wrote a long, a long poem to his son as advice and to scare him. He told him, Satufqadu in jahilta wa anta baqin wa tujadu in alimta wa law fuqidta. And he calls it a ta'iyya. The whole poem, it's like five pages, it all ends with ta. You know, that's why they call it al-ta'iyya. He said, Satufqadu in jahilta wa anta baqin. When you, you will be non-existent if you are ignorant, even if you exist. وَتُوجَدُ إِنْ عَلِمْتَ وَلَوْ فُقِدْتَ And if you have knowledge and leave it behind, then you will be existent even though your body ceases to exist. Brothers and sisters, what knowledge did we leave behind us? What legacy did we leave behind us? The brothers that passed away, like Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him, someone who was a true visionary, Someone who we all benefited, including myself, from Al Maghrib Institute and the seminars they began with. Early on, when we didn't know how to seek knowledge or where to find it, or when we had to go to the masjid and everything, all the content was in Arabic and Urdu, we couldn't find anything in English. The first generation, like myself and others in my shoes, were not receiving any knowledge at that time. Standing up and hearing a khutbah in English was something unheard of. As a matter of fact, when I grew up, it was refuted. And I'm not, I didn't grow up in the Stone Age. I'm talking about 15 years ago. We did not hear khutbahs in English. It was very rare to go and find a class of ilm, a class of fiqh, a class of aqidah, a class of something that's beneficial of tazkiyah, that is in English. And it is these pioneers and these visionaries like Shaykh Muhammad Sharif who started this. And subhanAllah, in the beginning, so many enemies and so many people who opposed his ways, so many people were against delivering the khutbah sermon in English. So many people were against knowledge being translated into English and the books. Oh, you must learn Arabic, you must learn Urdu. And there's nothing wrong, we have to learn Arabic. But the way things are going, realistically speaking, not everyone's going to learn Arabic. And it took a while, it took a visionary like this and others to, to tread this path, be the pioneers produce high quality CDs, high quality videos. Today, this morning, I watched a video from about 15 years ago by Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif about his Sira uh, class. And it was like a little trailer about what the Sira class is about, like a small promo, about 45 seconds. Wallahi, the production is high quality 
even in today's consideration. That's how ahead of time he was. The legacy that is left is often appreciated long after a person passes away. When we look at our history, brothers and sisters, starting from Imam Sufyan al Thawri, Imam Sufyan al Thawri was what? To his people, to the time that he lived in, he was just another scholar. Who is this Sufyan al Thawri? And he was wanted. He was wanted by the government and he lived in the mountains and he slept and he never barely went to the cities because if he was caught, he'll be thrown in jail. He was wanted for his opinions and how he spoke the truth despite the fact that the government did not like it. And they wanted him. But he continued to give knowledge, continued to spread knowledge, continued to write books. And after his death, maybe he had a small janaza. Maybe not a, pe- a lot of people spoke about him. But he laid the foundations of ilm al-hadith. So that me, 1300 years ago, can give a khutbah and mention his name. People like Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, do you think he had an easy life? No, Imam Abu Hanifa was imprisoned. For his opinions, Imam Malik was lashed until his arms could not be raised. He could not lift his arms to pray. That's how much he was lashed by the authorities. Imam al-Shafi'i was chased away because he was mounted. Imam Ahmad, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, he was put in prison for years. And he was beaten, and even the person who beat him in prison, he said, if I were to beat an elephant, it would have gone down. But Imam Ahmad stayed stayed consistent and stayed steadfast and stayed patient. The scholars around him told him, why are you doing what you're doing? After he died, years after, we know why. No one in his time, everyone gave in, but Imam Ahmad did not. He called a spade for what it is. He said what is wrong is wrong. And whose legacy is left behind? Wallahi, if I ask people here, do you know Ahmad ibn Hanbal? Everyone would say, yes, we, we heard of Imam Ahmad, of course. He's one of our great, he's one, the fourth of the four madhabs, the main four Sunni madhabs. But if you ask, if I ask you about the rest of the scholars who gave in, just so they don't go to prison, because they weren't planning that legacy as much as Ahmad ibn Hanbal. They didn't leave what he left behind. Do we remember them? Wallahi, none of us, very, very few of us would know who these scholars are. A lot of times they're appreciated centuries later. Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah, for his time, he wasn't the greatest scholar. He, some would accuse him of things, they would call him a philosopher, they would call him confused, they would call him somebody who's, you know, just thinking outside, well, why is he venturing off? Just do what we're doing, study and memorize the hadith. Why are you talking about these, these, these concepts that are alien to us? We're not used to it. Imam Ghazali was an outcast, but later on became the father and the pioneer of what we know to be ilm usul al-fiqh, the way we know it today. Of course, other scholars spoke about usul al-fiqh and they wrote about it, but Imam Ghazali was the first of his kind in the history of Islam. Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah lived 17 years in prison, left a legacy, he was not your ordinary scholar. He was not your ordinary scholar, he would teach. He would teach, he would study, he would write, he would fight, he would do everything. He would not leave a single action that he did not, that he preached that he did not do. He did everything. And he tried to. He was caught 17 years in prison. In his time, he was the outcast. Now, we call him Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Now his books are foundational in any curriculum, Islamic curriculum that, you, that we study. Any concept, you know, to the, the, the refuting these, these false ideologies and philosophies that the West brought about centuries later. People didn't know until they're like, oh, wait, Shaykh al-Islam spoke about all of this. Ibn Taymiyyah spoke about, oh, let's dig in his books, and they found all the answers there. In his time, he was an alien outcast. But that's how visionaries are, and that's how people who plant a legacy are. They don't, they're not concerned with what everyone around them think. They see the future, 
and they plan for it appropriately and accordingly. That's why they say a scholar is someone who sees the threat before it comes, way before, years. A student of knowledge is someone who sees and recognizes a fitna and a test and a threat in the midst, in the midst of it. Like when it comes, they can, they can recognize it. As for the people who are ignorant, who are not scholars and who are not students of knowledge, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us either scholars or students of knowledge. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Those who are ignorant and are not concerned, do not see a test, do not see a trial, do not see a tribulation until it's long past and they uh, lived the negative effects of, or they live the, neg the, the negative effects uh, of it. And they have to live with it because they didn't see it. Hence why we need ulama, why we need scholars, why we need visionaries. And why not start with ourselves, brothers and sisters? Let's leave a legacy behind. Let's think of what we, we are leaving behind. Let's set a path of seeking knowledge and looking for beneficial knowledge in any field. Whatever Allah gave us, master it, excel in it. Do the best because Allah created you for that. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will pave the path for everyone to that which is best for them. Yani whatever Allah created you for, you will, yani it will be easy for you to tread that path. Whether it's engineering, IT, whether it's medicine, Islamic knowledge, whether it's working as a mechanic or a plumber, an ele electrician, whatever craft you can excel in, master it. Don't look at anything else. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that passion. This is why He gave you that knowledge. He made you, he made you good in basketball because He wants you to excel in it. He made you good in, in soccer because He wants you to excel in it. He made you like pharmacy because He wants you to excel in it. Excel in whatever it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and leave a legacy in that respect. We ask Allah to make us from those who when they die, they leave a legacy behind for their own progeny, for their community, and for the Muslim ummah completely. Ameen ya Rabbi. العالمين أقول ما سمعتم واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين brothers and sisters right now every single one of us should be thinking should be thinking of what it is that we are leaving behind what it is that our responsibility in this world is and not live without a purpose because wallahi the moment the day you wake up not having a purpose not having a goal not having a drive not having an ambition that is the day that you open the doors of sadness to yourself of grief to yourself of depression to yourself of anxiety to yourself this is us opening the door, set a goal for yourself, make it great. It might be difficult. Everyone around you might say, yeah, that's impossible. But you know what? If you see it, and you, you see it, then Allah made you see it, even if no one else sees it. But your responsibility for what you see, not for what they see or don't see. Not for what they see or what they don't see. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and have mercy on us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our children, our progeny, our offspring, and to guide our spouses and to guide our parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us all in Jannatul Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on our beloved brother Bilal Muhammad who passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on our Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make from this community people who light up the future for the Muslim Ummah, people who tread the path of khair, people who plant the seeds of good that everyone will reap the fruits up in years to come. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibad Allah, inni da'an fa'aminu. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ja'al al-hayata ziyadatan lana fi kulli khair wa ja'al al-mawta rahatan lana min kulli sharr. Allahumma ghfir lana hazlana wa jiddana wa khata'ana wa amdana wa kullu thalika andana ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma harrir aqsana. Allahumma 
اللهم عافي مبتلانا اللهم داوي جرحانا اللهم فك أسرانا يا رب العالمين اللهم كل المستضعفين منا ولا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثن بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من إنسه وجنه فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك وأنعم وأكرم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد ابن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى اعتدلوا الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
اللهم بارك على محمد اللهم بارك على محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just a quick announcement, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, tonight, between Maghrib and Isha, we have uh, a guest uh, speaker, Sheikh Ammar al-Shukri. He came from Houston. He's an instructor at Al-Maghrib uh, Institute. And mashallah, tabarakallah, he is going to share uh, a talk about uh, the poetry of Imam al-Shafi'i. And Sheikh uh, Ammar is also a poet. And he has some very deep poetry, Allahumma barik. Allah gifted him with that. So not only does he write poetry, he translates poetry into poetry in different languages. Allahumma barik. And he's going to share that with us tonight, bi Azawajal. So do come over between Maghrib and Isha. Maghrib's at around 8.40, inshallah. So it's going to be from then until Isha, and Isha's at 10. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.